Hi, my name is Meli. I'm a computer science PhD student at the University of Washington. Today, I'm excited to present our DeNova peptide sequencing transformer model. To lay out the problem first, spectrum identification remains a key challenge in tandem mass spectrometry. At the end of a tandem mass spectrometry experiment, given mass spectra, trying to identify the amino acid sequence of the generating peptide using computational means at a massive scale remains a challenge. A particular flavor of this problem, the Nova peptide sequencing, basically relies on inferring the peptide directly from the observed mass spectrum without using a database of peptides or spectral libraries, which makes this a particularly challenging problem. Different methods have been proposed to tackle this task, ranging from heuristic search and dynamic programming in the past, for more recently, machine learning methods and neural networks in particular have provided state-of-the-art results on this particular problem. Some of these existing methods have their own shortcomings, and accuracy on the novel sequencing overall remains relatively low, with models being able to correctly identify around half of the spectra with their respective peptides. Additionally, most of these existing neural network-based approaches, as you can see a comparison on the right, rely on complex models, which combine multiple neural networks and complex post-processing steps which drives the number of parameters used in these models and complexity, as well as increasing the inference time. Additionally, most of these models rely on some form of M over Z axis discretization to provide input vectors for the machine learning models. And this vectorization process usually presents a trade-off between low binning resolution on one hand and higher model complexity on the other. We propose formulating the novel sequencing as a sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning problem, where on one hand we have mass spectra with, with its spectral peaks, and on the other hand a peptide as a sequence of amino acids. And once we formulate this as a sequence learning problem, we can use a transformer model to solve this by taking inspiration from other applications in computational biology, but also from natural language processing. The transformer models are powered by what's called self-attention mechanism and as is illustrated here in the natural language processing setting, self-attention basically helps us learn contextualized representations for, for example, words in a sentence. So all of these words are represented within the context of all the others in the same sentence. And to extend this analogy to mass spectrometry, we can think of spectral peaks as the words in the sentence and the spectrum as a whole as the sentence itself. And with the transformer model, we can learn representations for all of these peaks within the context of the others. So we have a way of and richly representing the spectra in a, in a latent space, which we can use for de novo sequencing. The model we propose, Casanova, takes all peaks in the mass spectrum as well as the observed precursor and charge to predict the peptide. And it offers a unified solution to sequencing different sequencing subtasks. Additionally, it's also able to directly model mass spectra in their native form, so it doesn't need to discretize the M over Z axis. And finally, Casanova filters out implausible de novo peptide sequences as, as, it as it predicts them during the inference based on the precursor M over Z observed from the spectrum. To give an overview of our model architecture, Casanova basically works on spectral peaks as well as the observed precursor mass and charge to predict the peptide. When predicting the peptide sequence, our model makes amino acid predictions in a sequential manner. So it uses previously predicted amino acids in the sequence as, as an input. After sequencing is finished during inference for a given spectrum, predicted and the observed precursor masses are compared and implausible peptide predictions are filtered out as needed. 
to train our model, we rely on a peptide we rely on peptide sequences which we obtain from database search, and those sequences are treated as ground truth labels. For each position along the peptide, Casanova outputs probability scores for 20 canonical amino acids as well as three post-translational modifications. And during training, the score corresponding to correct amino acids, so those are the probability scores, are maximized, while the scores corresponding to other amino acids are minimized. To train and evaluate Casanova, we use a benchmark dataset compiled by one of the er earlier de novo sequencing methods, Deep Novo. This benchmark dataset consists of around 1.5 million mass spectra, which are derived from nine different species. So each species is collected from a different experiment, all of which uses the same type of instrument, an Orbitrap HCD, and the associated peptide sequences. So in the dataset, there are around 300,000 distant peptide sequences, uh, which are on average 15 amino acids long. To evaluate this model, we rely on the cross-species evaluation framework proposed by the same paper before. And following this evaluation framework, each model is trained on eight species in the data set, and one of the species is left out for further testing. The cross-species evaluation framework allows us to test our model with peptides that weren't seen during training. So the, the training set and the test set contains a disjoint sets of peptides, and never before seen peptides are predicted for inference, which resembles the, the actual use case for the NOAA sequencing models, making this cross-species evaluation framework setup more realistic. To measure the sequence performance, we basically use two metrics, coverage and precision, both at the peptide level, but also at the amino acid level. At the peptide level, coverage represents the number of predictions that we make with the model as a share of all the test spectra in the test set. And precision is the number of correct predictions, the matching peptides, as a share of number of all predictions that we make for, the, for that same test set. Additionally, in, we combine those two metrics in a precision and coverage curve to better represent the performance of the model. And to do so, we basically rely on probability scores that our model output um, at the amino acid level and treat those as confidence scores. So to calculate the co confidence score for a given peptide, we basically average the amino acid confidence scores. And for different confidence score value thresholds, we calculate coverage and precision and accordingly plot a curve representing the performance of this model along, along those, those two axes. To show you a sample precision coverage curve here, we compare Casanova with Deep Novo uh, on the same test set. For the Casanova curve, note that the filtered out peptides with the simple M over Z filter are assigned a lower confidence. So all of them are clustered at the terminal end of this curve. And the red star that you can see on the plot basically represents the division between the plausible predictions and implausible predictions, which are filtered out. As you can see, Casanova actually achieves higher precision for given coverage values over the x-axis compared to deep novo. And at the, at the terminal end of these curves where coverage goes to one and we make predictions for all of the spectra in the test set, Casanova still performs better. Now showing you the actual experimental results on the full benchmark test set, we see that in all of the nine different species, Casanova consistently achieves better precision at the same coverage when you compare it to Deep Novo. And overall, in all of these species, Casanova achieves a higher precision overall when it's forced to make predictions for all, all spectra in the test set. As an additional value, 
summarizing the, this comparison and the performance of the models, we can look at the area under the precision and coverage curves. And when you compare two models using that metric, you can see that on average, Casanova outperforms Deep Novo by 0.13. To tell you a little bit about the ablation and variation studies that we've conducted to better understand the stem of the performance uh, and the improvements in our model, we most importantly tried to analyze whether the simple M over Z filter that we use, would, uh, how, how that would Im impact the performance of the model. So when we compare three versions of the model, the standard version which uses the filter, uh, one without the filter, and also a third version of the model, which relies on the dynamic programming uh, approach adopted by earlier de novo sequencing methods, which basically tries to explicitly match the mass of the predicted peptide with the observed precursor mass. Um, we see that the comparison of, the, of these three different approaches show that simple M over Z filter improves performance, not, over, um, not just over the no filter version, but also over dynamic programming, both in peptide level comparison, as you can see on the left, and also at the amino acid level comparison. Additionally, we try a different decoding strategy for the de novo sequencing during inference time. So the basic version of our model relies on what's called greedy decoding, where the amino acid prediction at each step is derived from the highest scoring amino acid that the model outputs. This is the simple approach. In contrast, what's called a beam search decoding strategy considers not just the highest, but the K highest scoring amino acid in each position. And at the end of inference, you end up with not just one peptide, but K different peptides, depending on the number K. And we basically assign the highest scoring peptide among those which has a matching mass to, to the observed precursor. And this basically leads to a more optimal um, peptide being assigned to the sequence. To show, to show you some experimental results with this approach, we compare the beam search decoding strategy at the inference time with the greedy search um, for Casanova. And the beam search strategy improves uh, both precision and as a result, uh, the area under the precision coverage curves while extending the coverage. Finally, I'd like to thank you for listening and you can check our paper for more details, more results, and also further discussion on the Nova sequencing. And also if you can find our open source code and pre-trained models on GitHub.